A name Jeff Goot has been their front man for a minute. Dude from outside Detroit, I think, uh, who they got off the X Factor some years ago. But doing a good job. And Stone Temple Pilots co-headlining with Live, Ed Koelchek, who was here last summer for Buzzard Fest. It's the Jubilee Tour. They're bringing Soul Asylum out with them as a special guest. STP is celebrating the 30th anniversary of Purple and Live celebrating the 30th of Throwing Copper. It's going to happen out of Blossom on September the 10th. LiveNation.com's got the details. These are not on sale until this Friday morning, so you'll grab them early. So be caller 10 and do just that. Two for STP and Live. Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Clevelanders are damn proud of their city. Cleveland! But come on, you were born here. He moved here. This is a man that has endured real torture in a foreign setting. So who's the real hero? I would hope people would listen to our heroes. Alan Cox. On 100.7 WMS. Mr. Bennington uh, would have been 48 years old today. Our friend Michael Rappaport uh, is 54 today as well. Uh, if you want to hear your Cleveland Cavaliers, this is where you will do it. Tonight, 7 o'clock. Uh, Cavs are here at home to play the Miami Heat. So 6.30 is when that pregame happens. And then they'll uh, hit the road for a um, couple of games. Be back next week. The Cavs heat tonight, 7 o'clock uh, on MMS and on the iHeartRadio app. Boy, things are popping off in Natchez, Mississippi. Just yesterday, I got a thing from Jordan, who is our one bureau chief down that way, about the semi-truck full of bees that crashed. Mm-hmm. And he sends me another thing this morning and goes, hey, look at this. I don't know what the hell's going on down there. A guy who just got pulled over tells the cop who pulled him over that he knows where a body is. This is also, this is also in Natchez. So two days in a row, they got the, uh, the semi-truck full of bees that uh, overturns. And uh, then this guy, routine traffic stop, tells the police... Well, I'll let them tell The Natchez last night quickly turned into officers discovering skeletal remains off the side of the road. Three in your sites, Joseph Doring spoke with the city's police commander. He joins us now to tell you what he learned. Joseph. Yeah, Maggie, Natchez PD Commander Jerry Ford says Thursday was just like any other night or any other traffic stop for two of his officers. That is until the driver they ended up detaining for drug paraphernalia said he knew of a dead body that was just within feet of where they were standing. Around 8.30 Thursday night, Natchez Police Department Commander Jerry Ford says two of his officers pulled over an individual at the intersection of Sergeant Prentice Drive and Fatherland Road. The officer who was backing up went up to the driver door, made contact with the driver and noticed paraphernalia inside his vehicle. What seemed to be business as usual for the officers quickly changed once the detained driver opened his mouth. The suspect uh, at that time stated to him that he had information uh, about a corpse uh, in, in the nearby area. In the event that what the detainee said was true, Commander Ford says the officers immediately called for backup. We came out and actually uh, went off in the woods about maybe 10 feet and discovered that there was uh, a dead corpse. This map shows you just how close the body- A dead corpse. <laughs> and the guy told them where to find a dead corpse. Not a live corpse. No. You know, I like how television stations, too. Live corpse, like my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'll tell you what, yeah, just yeah, a lie yeah, there, yeah, right? Yeah. Holy cow. Not really, she's pretty good. Uh, I like how, you know, a lot of television stations now, they will sponsor their headlines. Like at the bottom of the Chiron, you know, it'll say, uh, sponsored by, you know. Diet mug root beer. <laughs> right. But, like, officers find skeletal yeah, remains, and it'll say, was, sponsored uh, by so-and-so so furniture or whatever. Sponsored by TD Furniture. Anyway, they uh, thank you, Jordan. Things are popping off two days in a row there in Natchez, Mississippi. This guy goes, uh, hey, I can take you guys to where there's a body. Why would you give that up? They just pulled you over. Sir, your uh, tabs are expired. I'll show you a body. It's like stand by me. Mm -hmm. Maybe this guy had just watched you the movie. You want to see a dead body? <laughs> see a dead body. They said no previous missing person reports 
had been filed. So they're like, we don't, we can't speculate as to what this guy, maybe he just stumbled upon it and got back in his car. <gasps> oh, pardon me, I'm going to burn. Is the B truck the basis for all of the B-focused sequels of the film My Girl? Never saw My Girl. Um, it's one of my wife's favorite movies, and I know the, um, I know the broad strokes of it. Put his glasses on. Is that he can't see without his glasses. Can't see without his glasses, he yeah. His gla- my brother made fun of that scene because he said that, that was me. He said, when I die, he said, I put his glasses on. Put his glasses That's on. He hilarious. can't see. I was like, what makes you think I'm going to die first? I was going to ask, <laughs> your brother's already planning for you in a coffin? Well, kids do that stuff. Like, when you die, I'm make sure they have your glasses <laughs> on. I just want to make sure you can see. Yeah. All right. All my nicknames, all my bullying, bullying pretty much was centered around, well, I wasn't out, but gay was, we threw around gay, like whatever, I used gay too, but it was always around classes. Code Miser, which was Heat Miser, Curly Cokes, like all, all these nicknames I got were from my glasses and my hair. Yeah, but the Heat Miser didn't wear glasses. No, but he, he, shot, he shot laser beams from his eyes, and they said that that's, what, <laughs> that's what my prescription was. When I oh, I the see. <laughs> they didn't want to be, be in front of me because I would You burn them like ants. Yes. <laughs> that's weird. And your brother didn't wear glasses. No. Wow, because your mom does, right? Uh, How do you get lucky? I mean, usually. Read. Oh, so he did. Your brother got lucky and didn't need any corrective eyewear. Yeah, my dad wears glasses. My dad is the glasses wearer. My mom wears them to read. Or, or, I mean, she's gotten older, so I'm sure her eyesight is worse now. So she probably wears them more often. Hmm. But when I was younger, no, I don't, she didn't wear glasses all like that. Travis Kelsey is reportedly in talks to host the reboot of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Ooh. Uh, well, listen, he's got the entire uh, Swifty Nation to practice on. When the hell does he have time to do all this? Now, that's, uh, now that's that, impressive. Yeah, they they would the- shoot those all in the offseason. Uh, yeah, I'm just saying, he plays football. He does the podcast with his brother. He's banging Taylor Swift, and now he's doing Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Yeah, like, he would. it would take him three weeks to film all the episodes. I'm sure he probably has, like, a movie or something. And he's probably he's seeing Taylor Swift, like, once every two weeks. Isn't she in Asia or something? Or, you know. She She's on tour. Her, she sends her plane, I'm guessing. Huh. That's a flex. My girlfriend's sending my plane. <laughs> well, he's excited I'm about saying, it. Like, I, I'm not, I don't care about them as a couple. I, I like what they symbolize. The flex that it takes. <laughs> because I know he is the topic of conversation with his friends, whether he knows it or not. Like, he's, he's, <laughs> he's no longer one of, one of the boys. Like, he's Taylor Swift's man, so that he's on the upper echelon of men. He has to act a certain way. They have to watch what they say around him, and they he can't relate to wait, wait, normal wait, wait. dates. Why would they have to watch what they say around him? You mean about her? Not not just about her, but he's like, bro, you can't say that. Like, that Taylor Swift is America's sweetheart. She can't be seen with a man that's cursing and saying all types of derogatory things. Like, Bitches this and bitches that. Uh, well, I, I'm not getting that vibe off mic. him anyway. I don't know what the thing it is that he does with his voice, um, but code uh, switching. Huh? Exactly. Yeah, he has a code I, switch for the all American audience that he now has. He has young fans now. But Girl, code switching what? He has to be more presentable to be Taylor Swift's man. He can't be, right, but he can't be as edgy as he was. Edgy. I don't think he was edgy. The he guy was, was not edgy. Kind of <laughs> He's like he was kind like, of a douche. Yeah, he, he, was, like a, he was putting on a thing and but, doing a little I'm black saying, scent. But, sure, but before he was dating Taylor Swift, no one cared. He could be outside with his shirt off, like twerking, and you know. No, ch- I understand. Beer. I understand. You got to you got to button it up a little bit. And that's what but I it's mean. not like she's dating Kareem Hunt. I mean, she's not dating some guy that was like. You know, always a front page for something. He It's is, not like a Beauty and the Beast type situation. I mean, he was just a guy, a football player. But he's what, it, it, it's, she likes him because what he symbolizes. And it, she was. Oh, you know what she thinks. But I'm saying she was the underdog. Uh, you know, th- that's what she tried to paint her image to be like, oh, I'm the one on the bleachers lusting after the football player, the quarterback, whatever he plays. And now she got her a football guy. So now all the girls around the world 
are like, wow, I can be Taylor Swift too, <laughs> you know? I could be the one, the underdog, constantly made fun of and ridiculed. What and underdog? What, what underdog? Taylor She's like Swift. the most famous person in the world. But beforehand, that's what— She wasn't like, dating him beforehand. I She's dating Jake Gyllenhaal and John Mayer. It's, the it's, not like those, it's not like those guys are— You act like those guys are like D-listers. No, they weren't D-listers, but they also didn't last very long, and it wasn't as public as this one is. They're both at their prime. Well, she makes them all public because when it goes south, she gets an album out of it. Public afterwards. But we didn't know the ins and outs. We didn't know all the guys Taylor Swift dated until she talked about it. This one we knew but when they were even seeing each other. Like, no, she's getting to be an older woman. Yeah. She's planning for the future. Again. A flex. Well, they say that they're trying to figure out how his schedule might prevent him from making the call time every week. I think Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader is a live show, by the way. Um, and so um, they're going to figure that out. Why don't they just have Jason Kelsey do it? Because he's not. I know he doesn't have that Taylor stink on him, but the guy's got he's got a free schedule. Let him get out there and do it. So is it impressive now that Jason Kelsey is uh, has nothing to do? Is is it impressive if he stays fit? Yeah, look at Joe Thomas. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm impressed by people who work hard. Uh, but again, it's on not that hard. It's not. It's it's when the you financial don't have anything else to do. The financial aspect of it has been removed from the situation. That's a we're big deal. That. That's a big deal. Well, what are you talking about? What we're saying is he has a chef. He he's you, still got he still got to go in and drop plates. Right, but that's the only thing he has to do. That Un- is his only understood. Thing. So if your responsibility is solely lift weights, then it is not impressive to do so. Well, what I'm saying is not every movie that he does recently requires him to be like a shredded dude. Last couple of movies, in fact, he hasn't needed to be that guy. And he's probably going to do fewer of those movies because the guy's like early 50s. But he's still working out all the time. You're just impressed by abs. No, I'm Me impressed too, by Al. people who work ashamed. hard. No, you're impressed by abs because you always talk about well, everybody's Lenny Kravitz every everyone Mike... is impressed by abs. Lenny Kravitz is goddamn fifty nine <laughs> right. years old. But again, he doesn't you're have anything else to do. Yeah, he's, he lives on an he's island. An island. I <laughs> understand, <laughs> but there's there are a lot of rich people who don't keep themselves in shape. It's not their job to exactly like would you? Doesn't expect... matter if it's their job. The people who do it when it's not their job is impressive. To me, but the I think anybody who, who works naming, hard at something is impressive. The people who you are naming, it is their job to be fit, i.e. Mark Wahlberg. Well, whatever. I'm just saying. You still got to do it. If you, ha- if, so you were, if you were crazy rich and you had all day to do nothing. I'd be in incredible shape. Yeah. Why, well, then why not do it now? Because don't I have don't have time. You can't go to the gym in the morning? It's not you about the gym. Money. You were I for go a while. To, I go to the gym. I, but it's the it's the diet and the discipline. Well, then do that. Eating. I can't. I don't have, have a chef. chef. You I need a chef that. to eat. I don't have a chef. I do. I will need a chef. I need You someone. need a chef to eat well. I Because the amount of stress, because it's so difficult for me and time consuming for me to eat right, do all the dishes, buy all the groceries, do all that stuff, it adds so much stress to my life. And it's expensive. I mean, you talk about, I get it. If you're, Because I also you're, have a million other things to do. If you're rich and, you know, just because you're rich and you have time to focus on whatever, you talk about comedians. It doesn't make them funnier. You can be rich and write jokes all day long. Sure. Doesn't make you funnier. But you, you still have to be it. funny. Sure, right. but you also talk about it being a mixture of luck. And if you have nothing else to do except hang around the right people and go to meetings and be with your agents. But you gotta be. But you gotta be funny before but, you get the meetings. But you don't though. You yes, don't. you do. No, you don't. Of look course half, you do. Look at half of Hollywood isn't talented. Half of the people who are famous yes, and rich are those, not that good at what they nepo do. Nepo babies. Who? You think, think about, okay. Well, there's think a, about the TikTokers uh, and obvious, stuff. Obvi- butts and seats. Obviously, there's a lot of yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm saying that's that's a star that burns half as bright. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying that just 
focusing on the comedians, if we're talking about that, it doesn't make you funnier if you came from money and have all day long to work on your bad jokes. Right, but if you are a little bit funny, you have more time to get funnier, and you're less stressed, and you're able to be more prepared for whatever meetings you have. be around. Be around a lot, yeah. just being there, being at the club when they need someone to go up, or being seen in the right places to be seen. And Understood, but again, you you guys know this. If you're not any good, you're not going to get get asked to go up. Well, you're not going to get asked to keep going up. Yes, you are. You're telling me stage clubs are having unfunny people constantly go up on stage. Yes. Yes. Look at half the people who have Netflix specials right now. Well, somebody thought they were funny. That's the point. It's all subjective. So if you are around, you have the time, you're decent enough that you're not going to bomb for Mm -hmm. 15 straight minutes. Who has a Netflix special? Now, it might not be my cup of tea. Who has a Netflix special who got it and is not funny? You really want me to start naming names? A name will suffice. Because we know it's subjective. I'm not talking about subjective. I'm saying somebody, according to you guys, who is not funny. No, no, but no. somebody kept not giving that they're them not cha- funny. Somebody kept giving them chances. But that's what I'm saying. It's somebody the, kept giving that, them chances, even though they're not funny. Some, someone that we might not think is funny. Well, we all know it's subjective. What right. I'm talking about is there's not anybody who's listen. Everybody in showbiz is talented. Right? You wouldn't be in it if you weren't talented. Some people are more talented than other people. But you're not going to convince me that they're untalented people getting Netflix specials. Because they happen to be around when somebody was taking a meeting. You guys know that's not true either. You guys, I am on record as not thinking John Mulaney is funny. I've said that in the past. Mm -hmm. I like his last special, and that's the only one I've liked. His first three, I'm like, to me, what you're saying, where I'm like, you came for money. You've had nothing to worry about. All you've done all this. But time that's is a work really bad example. How is it a bad I'm example? Saying, because Mulaney, it, find funny. because you are in a distinct minority of people who don't think John Mulaney is funny. He's a good writer. He's a good sketch writer. He's a good comic. You might not like his style, but you're going to be in a distinct okay, minority on not thinking John Mulaney is funny. I'm not the biggest fan of Burt Kreischer. I don't think Burt Kreischer's comedy is very funny at all. It's not for me. It's for bros. It's for dudes who want to watch another dude take his shirt off. Taylor that Tomlinson. Is- that's one for me that I'm like, eh, it doesn't really do it. Uh, someone brought up Hannah Gadsby. Uh, Eliza Schlesinger. I think her stuff is not good. See, but I, like, I, really I know. Like you like Eliza. we We all. So we, if you're going to go that way, it could be. It's all subjective. So well, no, no, no. I'm, say- I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. I All I said was having Christina all. Pazitsky. Having all day to write your jokes doesn't make the jokes better. And you said Netflix is full of people who aren't funny. There are plenty of jokes that I watch on Netflix that I say that is not even a good joke. Uh, Matt Reif's new special, most of it is trash. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a lot easier to be funny on TikTok than to do a full hour. But But again. But this is what I'm saying. Right. But everybody figured that out when his hour dropped. So what are you de- what are you even trying to say? What are you defending right now? What I'm saying you're is that agreeing with me, but disagreeing with me at the same time. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that everybody's talented in some way, but you can't rely on that. You got there's got to be work and hard work and Again, put, we're not doing saying more they do, than other they didn't people. do any work, but we're saying when you can focus solely on a thing versus having to try and survive. I think we all know people that are funnier than any of us that have never been able to make get a leg up in show business because they're so focused on trying to just exist or they don't have the moxie to network or whatever it is, but they are fun. Martin Malloy, one of the funniest people we all know. He should have a Netflix special. He's funnier than most people I've ever seen do comedy, and he doesn't. And he works his ass off. So when he says the best ability is availability. I mean, that's part of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a big part of me no. moving here. What do they is say? 99% like, is showing up, right? Right. The, the chances of me being in a comedy club in New York and the right person seeing me, and I don't mean the right person to make me famous. I mean the right person who looks at me and is like, I like what you're doing. I can help you in this way, or I want to work with you. And that could be another comic. That could be an agent. That could be anything. Probably not going to be a cat. Probably not going to be a cat. 
But the chances of that happening here are tenfold the chances of that happening in Cleveland. So now, imagine if I had nothing to do all day except go on podcasts and hang out and do this and do that and, ne- and not have to worry about paying your bills. I mean, no, there are a huge contingency of people who don't think Amy Schumer is funny, right? And they could say, all, even though she had all day to write her jokes because she came for money, they, that will not matter because anything she writes they're not going to like. So my point is, is that it's the availability and the time that you have not having to worry about day-to-day stuff that other people have to worry about, and the way that's it, invaluable. That's invaluable, and the way it helps your psyche and your mental health yeah, and your you're ability. Not yeah, out. your ability to yeah. just kind of be there and not be worried about whether whether where you should be at that moment. Hmm. Oh, I'm way late here. Um, I got newfound glory tickets. Want to go see them? Uh, they are coming through this summer. Uh, doing the 20th anniversary of Catalyst. If you go that far back with those guys, you'll enjoy that show. And a pound cake sports break. We'll get to that closer to 530. 35192. Want to text me for anything, and we'll be back. The Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio app and your favorite smart device. Just tell it to play The Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. From the Universal Windows Direct Weather Center, WMMS Weather. Tonight, a chance of snow showers down to 22. Tomorrow, becoming sunny, getting up to 33. Friday, chance of rain or snow mainly in the afternoon. Friday's high, around 50.